Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you all. Προσχωμέν. Δόξα σύ, Κύριε, δόξα σύ. Το καιρό εκείνων υπέστρεψαν οι ποιμένες, δοξάζοντας και ενούντας τον Θεόν, επί πάσιν ήσυκούσαν και είδον κάθος ελάληθη προς αυτούς, και ότι επληθυστήνε η εμέρη οκτώ και επιρετιέμενη το πεδίον και εκλήθη το όνομα αυτού Ιησούς, το κληθέν υπό το αγγέλο πρώτον συθλήνε αυτόν εν την κοιλία. Το δε παιδίον ήξανε και κρατάβοτε πνεύματι πληρωμένων σοφίας και χάρις Θεού ήσεν απ' αυτό. Και πορεύοντο οι γενείς αυτοί και τός εις Ιερουσαλήμ την ορτή του Πάσχα και ότι έγινε τον ετών δώδεκα, ανεβάντων αυτών εις την Ιερουσαλήμ, κατά το έθος της ορτής, και τη ελώσα των τας ημέρας, εν τον υπόστευήν αυτο, αυτούς, υπέμεινε Ιησούς ο Παΐς εν Ιερουσαλήμ, και ου και γνώει ο Σύφ και η μητέρα αυτού. Νομίσαντες δε αυτόν εν τη συνοδεία, είναι ηλθόν ημέρα σωδών, και ανεξίτων αυτών εις της συγγενίσθη και εις της γνωστής, και μη ευρον, ευρώντες αυτών επιστρέψαν εις Ιερουσαλήμ, ζητούντος αυτός. Και γένε τον μέθη μέρας τρεις ευρών αυτών, εν τον ιερό καθεζόμενον εν το μέσον των διδασκάλων, και ακούοντον αυτών και περώντον αυτούς, Εξίσταντον δε πάντες, ακούντες αυτόν επί τη συνέση και τες αποκρίσες ειν αυτού. Και οι δόντες αυτόν εξεπλάγησαν και προς αυτόν η μητήρα αυτού είπε, «Τέκνον τι επίσης ημίν ούτος, ειδού ο πατήρ σου καγό οδυνόμενοι εξητούμεν σε». Και είπε προς αυτούς, τι ότι εξήτετε με, ουκ ειδείτε ότι εν της το πατρός μου δι είναι με. Και αυτοί οι συνήκαν το ρήμα, ο ελάλησεν αυτοίς. Και κατέβη με ταυτόν και ήλθεν εις την Ναζαρέτ, και ειν υποτασσόμενος αυτοίς. Και η μητήρα αυτού διαιτήρει πάντα τα ρήματα τα αυτά εν την καρδία αυτής. Και Ιησούς προεκόπτε σοφία και ηλικία και χάρητη. Παρά Θεό και ανθρώπι εις. The reading is from the Gospel according to Luke. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, o Lord. Glory to you. At the time, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them 
And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Peace be unto you who proclaims the good news of the gospel. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I mean, good evening, everyone, and God bless you. On this, our parish feast day, I say, Kronia Pola, many years, but not just in number, more importantly, many years filled with the grace of God. What a beautiful experience it is for any Christian community, and there is no Christian who can live in isolation. Every Christian must be within community, in order to truly recognize himself as a follower of Jesus Christ. What a blessed experience it is for every Christian community to be able to uplift their patron saints, to know that we have someone holy, someone who's connected to God in the most intimate of ways, constantly praying for us, looking out for us, guiding us, shepherding us, and helping to correct us when we lose our way. And for you and for me, we are so blessed to have as our patron St. Basil the Heaven Revealer, St. Basil the Great, a true shepherd of the church, one whom we know about was a clergyman of the church all the way back in the 4th century, during a time period where there was great strife within the universal Christian experience because they were now allowed to legally express their Christianity. And so with that came competition of ideas. With that came competition for leadership, so on and so forth. And so it took individuals who allowed Jesus Christ to establish the agenda, to join themselves to Christ and to shine forth as the true leaders of the church. St. Basil was one of these Christians. Dare I say, if it were not for individuals such as St. Basil during his time, we don't know if Christianity would have continued on in human experience. But that doesn't mean that St. Basil was perfect. He was far from it. He was a man who was exceedingly smart, intelligent, beyond imagination. One may even dare to say he was the smartest man on the face of the earth. He proved it by graduating at the top of his class in all of the world's top universities of the day. And then, when he returned home to the region of Caesarea and Cappadocia, after a brief period of time, was influenced by his older sister to dedicate not only his intellect, but all of his time, all of his talents, all of his treasure to the glorification of God in service of his church. St. Basil is the father of communal monasticism. He is one of the most productive theologians that we have in the history of Christianity. And he stood in the face of competing idolatrous ideas and always stood with the truth of Jesus Christ. We know that St. Basil died at the age of 49 years old. And when he was eulogized by his best friend, St. Gregory the Theologian, who was the Bishop of Constantinople, he referred to him as a candle that was lit from both ends. 
And because of that, it burns out in half the time, but it also produces twice the light. St. Basil died of physical exhaustion at the age of 49, but he put out phenomenal amounts of light. He reflected the love of Jesus Christ in all that he did. We live now in a day and an age with all sorts of competing ideologies. We have not only offered to us, but imposed upon us. And when I say us, I mean all of us, even our children when they go to school. All kinds of competing ideologies striving to at least nominalize the Christian message, if not throw it out altogether. Now is the time again that we need men, women, and children to align themselves with the light and the truth of Jesus Christ more so than we ever have before in our lives. And we must be unafraid to allow that light to shine forth into every component and aspect of our lives. Do not simply allow the light of Christ to shine when it's easy. When you enter into the doors of this church and you're surrounded by other Christians who believe the same, but allow that same light of Jesus Christ, having received fuel inside here of God's house, to shine in everything that you do, beginning in your homes with your nuclear families, extending then into your places of work, to your schools, your sports teams, your neighborhoods, your social circles, and dare I say, even that heinous environment of social media. Right now, the world needs you and it needs me to be unafraid and to put out twice the amount of light than we ever have before in our lives. How blessed we are to have St. Basil, someone who did that in similar circumstances, be our patron saint. We have a lofty example in front of us but also a powerful ally in the heaven revealer. Let all of us as individuals and let us as a church always be unafraid to embark upon the calling to which Jesus Christ himself has provided us to shine his light into the world around us. The world needs us to step forward. St. Basil did it when the world needed him to do it in the fourth century. Now here we are in our time and the world needs us to do the same. Don't allow the beauty of Christian pilgrimage to simply be a thing of history that we read about in books, but allow it to be the living testament and the lifeblood of your Christian pilgrimage and of the life of this Christian church. If you and I make that choice here today, trust that we will be supported by powers unlike anything that we could imagine. We'll be supported by our patron, by all of the angels, by Panagia, and by Christ himself. And this is the only pathway that helps make better this world. Will we answer the call. It is our choice, and it is needed. May God's glory be seen in our choice and in our Christian virtue, exemplified in our daily lives, this evening and always. Amen.